begin to find peace of whom we are and how we live our lives and how we experience those relationships within ourselves. Uh, what, I will, what I prepared, I find uh, uh, books of Matthew Kelly quite helpful and useful. I, was, I, um, I kind of read them on occasion and I came to understanding that I will call his writings of something in the, in the, in the line of practical theology. Uh, perhaps being myself more pragmatic, I like to see the bottom line at the end of the line of how things are and how we're going to get there. It helps to read and to reflect on his writings, applying the gift of our spirituality and the power of the sacraments to help us to advance and to progress on the journey of life. So to prepare in this, for this presentation, I use his book, Perfectly Yourself. Perfectly yourself, discovering God's dream for you. So if you didn't have it, or if you didn't read it, if you have a desire to do afterwards, great. If not, I think uh, that would be just fine as well. So uh, we will use this. And I have a few slides here, not many. So um, this is the, the theme of what we are proposing here. Searching for Advent hope in relationship with ourselves. So as I mentioned, I worked on this and, um, and I used this book with help of uh, scriptural base, basis and quotes and some personal reflections to kind of capture of what, we try to, uh, of what we try to say about this whole idea of relationship with ourselves. I think it is important to remember one thing, to have one thing in mind. I'm sure you're familiar with this. Are you familiar with that? Right? It is the logo of the um, Marine Corps. So, you know, the Simper Fidelis means faithful forever, right? Keep that in mind. This is a very powerful symbol. Not just for Marines, but I think it is also important for us uh, on the journey of faith, forever faithful. So, relationships. Relationship is an environment where two or more learn to work together to find the right engagement with each other in order to serve and nourish the experience of shared purpose. Your relationship with yourself, our relationship within ourselves, are experienced in terms of your relationship with mind, body, and soul, or in terms of true, of your true and false selves. St. Paul tells us, in the letter to the Ephesians. For no one has ever hated his own body, but he nourishes and tenderly cares for it, as the Messiah does the church. So relationships are about a purpose. They are about a vision and a mission. What is our purpose? is to become the best version of ourselves. To desire to be more perfectly yourself. To feel more at home with whom you are. In order to capture the meaning of my presentation in the focus and the context of, um, of, of what I'm trying to share with you, I would, I would focus on three areas of searching for Advent hope in relationship with ourselves. That is, we will talk a little bit about character and progress, faith and belief, and humility and simplicity. And I will ask um, to engage in the, uh, reflection and conversation, maybe in small groups, and maybe uh, we will do something together if somebody would like to share 
uh, some of, of, of your own kind of uh, expressions at the end of all each of those three sections. When you look at the context of, of, of Advent, they are two very powerful individuals, people, who share and to live that very healthy relationship with themselves. And these two are Mary and John the Baptist. If life is about the purpose, uh, rather if relationship is about the purpose and vision and mission, Mary tend to exercise this quite well. When we reflect upon the scene of the Annunciation, her deep and profound faith, trust in God, uh, feeling very comfortable with herself, young girl, now about to become pregnant, she responds, yes, and then not overwhelmed with any of what just happened, she actually, in haste, the gospel tells us, goes to serve and to bring the good news to her cousin, Elizabeth, right? That's what she does. The same thing with John the Baptist. John the Baptist was kind of a, I don't know if he would have many friends around today, because he was kind of different, right? I mean, he lived in, in, the, in, the, in the desert. He was wearing not necessarily a brand type of clothing. Although he, he ate very healthy. <laughs> All organic food. <laughs> honey, wild honey. It's like our honey, wild honey, all natural. No human intervention other than to harvest the honey. Locust and some other stuff, whatever that desert produces. If you have been on the desert and spent a night or two, maybe you have an idea of what desert produces as far as the nourishment goes. But that's what John did. And John at the moment, John had a, had a uh, you know, as we say, everyone has a kind of two minutes on the stage in life. And John did have that. And he could kind of run, run with that dance quite well. But he felt very comfortable with himself. Very confident to know of who he is. And he tells us, I am not he. I am not he. I am not even worthy to untie the sandals at his feet. And yet, John is the one who goes and proclaims the upcoming Messiah. He is the one actually who invites this, who will follow Jesus eventually to do what? To repent and to believe in the gospel. Think about this idea of purpose, vision, and mission. Of this way of creating relationship within ourselves. The two come together to experience and to support a vision, a purpose in life. So they have to be some kind of a... And, and they have to be some type of elements that help us to support and to experience this in life, right? So, first is character and progress. Character and progress. I think it, it would be fair to say that we all want to advance in life. Fair? We all want to advance in life. Whether we are dealing with health, relationships, finances, spirituality, or career, career, we have enormous desire to grow and change and improve ourselves. The challenge to advance is that we tend to focus too much on the desired outcome and not enough on the progress we are making. So, I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a doctor, a professional player. Or parents would say, 
we want our child to be the next famous star, uh, an athlete or the best quarterback, you name it. We tend to look at the end and we tend to forget the progress that is needed to go and to advance through the stages of life and, and education and everything else in order to arrive there. To focus on the progress will encourage us to persevere to achieve our goals and dreams because life is not about doing or having, but about becoming. Becoming what? Becoming fully the person that God created for you to be. We all have dreams to care for our children, to have happy marriages, to fulfill our life vocations, to be spiritually strong. These are God's given dreams, and during this Advent, we want to start living them out. When we don't live them, we tend to abandon our true selves, often wishing we were more like somebody else. Friends, we live in a society that is constantly bombarding us with images, messages, deceiving ads, and countless merchandise that constantly pulls us into the mindset of you can be better. And you are not good enough. This makes it very difficult to create solid, honest, and loving relationship with ourselves. We are called to be honest with ourselves and to acknowledge our imperfections is the first step of the process to search for God in our relationship with ourselves. There is a quote that goes like this. You are beautiful, I know because I made you. Signed, God. The story of Edison, uh, Thomas Edison, afford to find a way to keep a light bulb burning is well known, right? You know that? Thomas Edison, he created, discovered light bulbs, right? He tried more than 10,000 combinations on materials before he found the one that worked. People asked him later in his life how he could continue after failing that many times. He said he didn't see the other attempts as failures. He then went on to explain that he had successfully identified 10,000 ways that didn't work and that each attempt brought him closer to the one that would. He saw his failures as progress. So, we need to practice. Practice doesn't make it perfect, but makes progress in your practice 
the right thing in the right ways. And we all know that this is not always easy. Influenced by our upbringing, we often feel inadequate, plagued with self-doubt, as there must be something wrong with me. We were told that we can do anything if we work, if we work hard and put our minds into it. True or false? Right? You work hard, you put your mind into it, you can get it done. True? Right? But this is not true. Because we have unique abilities, gifts, and talents. Each day, every one of us must make this journey from the expectation of others to the celebration of true self that God created us to be. The journey that it should make you a better person today than you were yesterday. You know, just think from your life experiences, the effects and the empowerment, I'm mean, not empowerment, but the, the, the influence that these statements made in your life and the things that did not work out as a result of it. Where did you go to talk about it? There was nowhere, there's nowhere to go. Because the result is what? A shame, embarrassment, or a simple a conclusion that what? I'm just a failure. I mean, I'm supposed to do this, 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 and this. And gosh, I, I look at, you know, if my mom would ask me to be, I don't know, f f chemist, and they would expect me to be one, either I would discover something that is so uh, incredible, <laughs> Or I will put the planet or some kind of chaos. Because this is not my gift and talent. And I think this is what the search for the Advent hope as we come to reflect allows us to be truly perfect with ourselves the way that God created for us to be. And what is required is that honesty with ourselves. Because honesty allows us to be open for the medicine and the healing that is necessary for us to get better and stronger and more beautiful. Just imagine, you go to a doctor. You don't go to a doctor to tell him a story or her a story. You go and you prepare what you're going to say, when is the ache, how it happens, when it happens, how long it does, what is the scale from 1 to 10, all kinds of stuff, right? And you said, make sure, Doc, make sure, do you got it all? Right? You, make, you know, it hurts here too, you know? And the knee, when I bend, I just can't stand it, you know? And, and this and that and this. It's just a hot mess altogether. <laughs> but we do that. We are very honest with everything that is going on. Why? Because what is the... The, the end result of visiting a doctor, well, to get better, though, right? And you don't want to go to a doctor to tell him or her a story, prescribe a medicine, and as the end result, you will get worse. You, people will think that you're crazy or something, right? Well, how about ourselves? And our relationship with ourselves? How do we plan to be healthy and, and strong and solid when the struggle within is real, and authentic. How do we heal that? What is the re inner relationship doctor where? Spiritual director? Or, more, or maybe the God who created us, who loves us unconditionally, the one who provides and ordains everything in such an incredible way that we will actually experience a healing and wholeness and regain all that the Lord desires for us to live. 
So the idea behind of what we talk now of building the sense of character and progress and to be comfortable and at peace with ourselves is to make you happier, more fulfilled, a better spouse, a better parent, child, sibling, in spite of daily def defeats. We focus on progress. Because failure is a part of progress, not a final outcome, and the way that moves us towards our goal. That is what? To be the best version of ourselves. You know, in the moment we will talk about this sense of, uh, of true self. So, what brings about this progress what, what is about to bring that progress is character. Character will affect your future more than any other single ingredient. It is the best investment in your future. Paul tells us about this in the letter to the Romans. More than that, he says, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Thoughts create actions. Actions create habits. Habits create character. Character is your destiny in every relationship we have. Character is not what someone says but what someone does. At the heart of the character, we find our habits that are the building blocks of our character that are external expression of our eternal reality. Character is built one habit at a time. One virtue at a time. Virtues are good habits. And the cornerstone of character that leads us to become the best version of ourselves. We need to be honest with ourselves to take into account both the good and the bad. The strong and the weak within us. In order to change our habits and improve our character. Character is the very core of our happiness because it's built on what? On habits, on virtues. It's the external expression of our eternal life. What makes you happiness? When you do the right thing, right? How do, do, how do we do the right things? Well, when the virtues are driving a force behind our actions. And how the actions are happening? Well, when we invite them, when we are at peace and comfortable with ourselves, when we are really rejoicing and with gratitude live our lives with praise and thanks to God for the gift that I am. I mean, this is beautiful stuff, you know, right? I mean, we often talk about if we would just appreciate the gift that we are. But I think influenced by the past, you know, put your head and work hard and you're going to get it, and you didn't. And there's nowhere to talk about. How do you deal with this? How is that effect affects you and have been affecting you and, and throughout the lives, the people that you dealt with and, and say and did the things that you don't want to do, but that was just 
the thing that you kind of learn to do to deal with stuff, right? We often say, well, people do crazy stuff. How somebody could do this? Are you nuts? We don't know what they go through, do we? But just if you put yourself in the scene of whatever the case may be, you know, and we exercise this basic principle of Christianity to understand rather than to be understood. Perhaps we will become more at peace and more comfortable with ourselves to build those good habits, to build the character, to invite the life of virtue, because it's not about me, isn't it? But about the benefit of the other person. And when we do those good things, I mean, naturally, we just feel good about it, don't we? So, we hope that this, again, this search, this semper fidelis, this being always faithful to God and to ourselves will help through this Advent journey to search and to find and to see the sense of hope that the journey of Advent offers us in preparation to experience the birth of Christ into our lives again. Our lives change when our habits change, right? Now, within each of us, we have two selves. The true and the false, right? And there is countless battlefield within our heart, right? Would you say that? And what is the fight about? About the dominance. Who has a greater influence in my heart? The true self speaks for the character. The false self speaks on behalf of ego. That is the enemy of character. The authentic true self finds its destiny in all that is good, true, and beautiful. The ego is constantly making demands based on insecurity, self-glorification, and self-gratification. The character is the ambassador of the higher self, while the ego represents the lower self. With, with which self do you identify? Our ego places us at the center of the universe and being consumed by it, everything and everyone seem to be always out of place. The ego is never satisfied and always hungry to feed itself. It is self-centered, restless, ignorant, and indifferent. The true self, on the other hand, is patient, selfless, generous, and genuinely interested in other people, leads to authentic happiness. It offers progress to grow in virtue as the work of our lives. See, progress, character, virtue, habits, very important word that we would like to kind of keep it in mind. They allow that progress to advance in life. Although it is not easy, but requires constant effort. A daily decision as each moment of the day offers the next right thing to do. Maintaining character requires constant vigilance, discipline, and to stop chasing the false self 
and to let go of all ego-driven behaviors, it requires strength and surrender. Arthur Adams says this, good character is that quality which makes one dependable whether being watched or not, which makes one truthful when it is to one's advantage to be little less than truthful, which makes one courageous when faced with great obstacles, which endows one with the firmness of wise self-discipline. In relationship, this is the three areas that we will talk about, right? So we covered the first one, character and progress. So my friends, just to capture this part of this presentation, questions, what is your progress like in life? Do you celebrate? True self versus false self. Which self would you choose? Character and virtue. Do you invest in them? Again, the, the practical aspect of spirituality I find to be very attractive and very important. Because it's the one thing to talk in theory about things, and we tend to do that. Oh, you know, we have a great idea, so we're going to do this, this. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, you know, um, somehow we figure out. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to help us. <laughs> well, that's very nice. I mean, we need to depend upon the Holy Spirit, but we also need to do our part in the sense of building and setting up those goals that are more achievable. What are the three words? Realistic, challenging, and... and, and, and um, and measurable. You have to kind of have a, you know, and again, this is the idea about spirituality, and this is all within the context of spirituality. You know, this is, this is, we're talking about ourselves. We are created in the image of and likeness of God. We tend maybe not to talk in those I, 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 ways about ourselves, but that's, that's our true self. That's whom we are, right? That's whom we are. That's how we identified ourselves of whom we are in our relationship with God and with one another. So those goals are very good, but we wanted to find a ways of how to make that, you know, tangible, measurable. You know, what is, and, and again, and they need to be achievable. We don't want to make, you know, I'm going to say a rosary the rest of my life for a redemption of the souls in purgatory. Well, very nice, but you may want to be careful if this is really a measurable and achievable goal. Well, maybe you're going to start just to say a, a handful of, 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 of um, Hail Marys. As, as I, instead of watching a movie, let's say, I'm going to make, set my, me, my, myself a goal that I, instead of in the evening watching whatever news you watch, and then you get aggravated on top of this, and you lose your cool and temper. No win-win, no win-win, right? This is crazy news, but well, why do you watch it? I mean, who turned the TV on for you, you know? I cannot believe it. Well, shut it up, turn it off, and forget about it. Grab the rosary or walk around. Get this fresh air. Nice walk around, you know. Again, the whole idea about the relationship of being uh, the searching for Advent hope in relationship with yourself is to be perfectly okay with whom you are. So when you pretend and you present yourself as something else, you feed your own ego for the sake of false self. And, you know, and this is a very exhausting exercise. If you've ever been in the situation that you fed your false self to build your ego, I mean, it is really tiring a journey of life. Because it is true to say that it will always leave you unfulfilled, restless, seeking and wanting for something because there is no genuine satisfaction in anything that you do because this is not true. You, this, is not, this is not whom you are. Versus being humble, and we will talk about in, in the moment of being, uh, you know, just humble and, and build upon the character that is the gift to acknowledge that this is who I am. But now we acknowledge the things that we dealt with. And somehow on the journey of life, we, we want to meet and, and acknowledge and be honest that, you know what, things maybe just were not right. Not that we're going to go and fall apart because of this, but that's not how Christianity works. We don't dwell on what happened a moment ago. Would we rejoice that we find the grace of God today and now? And the opportunity given to us to respond to that grace so we can make a progress 
from today on to build on our character, to invite our, uh, the, the great virtues and habits, to be strong ex in internally so we can express the desires and the, and, and the gift that we are created in the image of God in every aspect of our lives. And so when tomorrow will come, you know, we pray for that. It's not a given, it's a gift, right? Tomorrow is a gift. When tomorrow will come, actually, we should find ourselves, as I said, happier and better place than we were just a moment ago. And I think this is what the exercise that we try to engage, uh, it's all about. This is what the spiritual journey is all about. This is what the relationship with God in church is all about. The God doesn't take anything away from us. But through his self-gift to us to redeem that very brokenness and struggle that we experience or affects our lives because of what has happened, to let it to bring to the Lord so like to going to a best doctor, to offer it, to bring it to him so he can heal, he can provide what we need, he can uh, rebuild and, 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 and regain all that our heart desires to be. And we know, right? We know the way how we would like to live our lives, right? I, really, we, I believe we do know. Deep down at the, at the core of our, of our being, we have that sense of ourselves. Maybe it doesn't happen often. Maybe it happens whatever. But sometimes maybe when you put the makeup and you actually have a good day or good morning, whatever. Or you shave, it's like, gosh, I like that person in the mirror. <laughs> right? which is a true impression of ourselves. See, the funny thing about us, the funny thing about us, the way how God created us, face is the only part of the body that you cannot see yourself. Face is the only part of your body that you cannot see yourself. And look what, how and what is captured by your nonverbal expressions, right? You look at you, it's like, what's the matter? Nothing. Really? <laughs> I mean, it looked like, you know, you had like, I don't know, the greatest disaster in your life happened. No, nothing happened to me. <laughs> really? Well, I mean, your face really doesn't show that. No, I'm fine. <laughs> okay. I mean, we don't even know what we present, what we reflect, right? We have no idea what we, how we show ourselves, true or false. We don't. We think we do, but we don't, because we don't have an image. Sometimes you look at the mirror, it's like, this, and you make faces, you know, when you make, so, really, that's how I look? Gosh. <laughs> I mean, I do that sometimes, you know, it's like, it's like I, 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 some, sometimes you said something silly or, or crazy, or, you know, it's like, did I really say that, and I look that way? Anyway, so this is our idea of a character in progress all in the spiritual context, to help to search for the Advent hope, to be better and more beautiful and stronger in our relationship with ourselves, right? Progress, character, progress, self, false, ego. You know, when we put this on the here, what is it? True self and false self, which self would you choose? This is not just a, a, a question that is kind of silly one, you know that, right? It's a lot of people who choose false selves. Why? Because they don't feel good about themselves. And again, living and feeding on ego, on false self, is a really tiring and exhausting exercise going through life. The second session will be shorter. The third will be a little longer. We have about 20 minutes, so I will keep moving, all right? So second part, uh, second part of this uh, tonight is faith and belief. We all believe in something. It is part of whom we are. Our lives are directed by belief. Increasingly, we are not born with beliefs and opinions. Interesting, interest, interestingly, we are not born with beliefs and opinions, but rather, these are a result of our education and experience, and they evolved in our lives, and they are at the heart of our relationship with ourselves. Would you say that's true? 
Belief creates happiness, but when we act against our beliefs, we begin to create a division in relationship with ourselves. Just imagine something terrible happened in, in life. Either tragic accident, or maybe your loved one died unexpectedly, or the dreams that you had for your, so, for your own, or for your family, or for your children just kind of dashed. I think we all experience something in those lines at one moment in our lives. How do we respond to that? How that affects our belief that evolves as we go through life, right? Affects us. Leads to doubt. Questioning God, which is in itself not bad, but the next step may be very challenging because could lead us away from him. And that direction moving, going away from God is not necessarily, it is not a good way of, of, of living and experiencing life. So friends, the problem is not that we do not believe, but rather that we do not live what we believe. What we believe affects everything. How we live, how we work, how we feel about ourselves and others. We read in the book of Exodus, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of a life of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. When we are confronted about the dividedness of our lives, what we often say, this is my life. And I can do whatever I want, and you leave me simply alone. This is just the way I am. True? No. It creates dividedness in a personal pathology that soon becomes a problem for others. So the cost of divided life is very devastating. Therefore, we long for unity. Unity in relationship with ourselves. Because the sense of, of oneness of life, life that is ordered, although made of many parts, but one, life of harmony and integrity. The evolving reality of our belief and faith in the sense of our per personal relationship with God is affected by our personal experiences in life. And those experiences affect the way how we communicate, share, live our lives, and communicate and treat others. I dealt with many women, I mean, uh, who experienced abortion. Uh, many years when I was at the cathedral, I, was, um, I still am kind of involved with the uh, 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 Richard's Vineyard Retreat Ministry. And the one thing that is quite amazing uh, as a result of abortion is that many of these women, as a, as a, um, a coping mechanism, they wish other women to have an abortion. They are not vicious or they are not uh, like wishing them anything bad. They just simply, the, 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 uh, the, the tragedy or the drama or the trauma of that event is so overwhelming that, that the mind is not really rational, as they will tell. And the only way really to deal with this, to cope, to find peace, is that more of these women will be together into this. So, my friends, the way how we believe and the, our life experiences affect us and affect our relationship with God. Again, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of a life of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Character and beliefs 
are not a light switch to be turned on and off or a code and a heart to be left in the waiting room. They are part of the very fabric of our being. And when we treat them as optional accessories, as being disposable, we create deep, div we create deep division within ourselves. Personal integrity, living our beliefs, proactively willing the good of others, doing what we say will do, is at the very core of unity of life. We listen and we hear in the book of Psalms, teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Unity of life is established one decision at a time. What allowed the United States of America to thrive in the midst of periods of rapid change, crisis, or opportunities? It was the Constitution, or is the Constitution. Americans looked to the Constitution for guidance. Our core belief plays a similar role in our lives. Our guide ought to be gospel and the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let us live all the good things and believe in all of them, trusting, trusting that God has the best for us. And he doesn't disappoint, but invites us through ups and downs and difficulties on life sometimes to advance in the progress, to experience the vision and mission of our, of our lives that is to become the best version of ourselves. So, we will go on the second part. So, three questions. You are a believer. What do you believe? Unity versus conflict. Are you one body or many fragmented parts? Mission or crisis? Where do you look for guidance? So the third part is humility and simplicity. Humility and simplicity. If you've ever been to the Basilica of the Nativity in Bethlehem, this is how the entrance looks like. The entrance to the Basilica of the Nativity in, in Nativity in Bethlehem has a tiny doorway barely of five feet high. The reduced dimension of this doorway challenges visitors today with a message. We must bend down. Spiritually, we must, as we were, go on food in order to pass through the portal of faith and encounter the God who is so different from our prejudices and opinions, the God who conceals himself in the humility of a newborn baby. Cluster, congestion, confusion, it seems that have become an acceptable ways how we live our lives today. You are worried about, you are worried and distracted by so many things, but only one thing is necessary. Remember that passage from Luke's Gospel? There were two women, the one was anxious, the one, the one was less anxious, and the Lord is pointing out what is really important. Jesus invites us to simplicity through his teaching in the gospel. Simplicity is the way to clarity. We complicate our lives because we don't know what we want. Do you have a clear sense of your purpose, your core values, direction in life? We identify that our purpose is what? Is to become the best version of ourselves. This purpose is your goal, the dream, the big picture. So one of the core values 
needs to be honesty. Life becomes much simpler as you begin to develop a sense of whom you are. What do you want? What are your values? And what role you will play in the wonderful adventure we call life? Simplicity is one of the enduring principles of happiness and offers a clear sense of your mission in life. It gives you sense that you are in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. It just makes sense because it liberates you from your personal self-centered cluttered person with focus on offering yourself without any baggage for the sake of others. The focus on why we are here, it leads to discover our mission in life. People who have a sense of mission in their lives are filled with joy because they serve a greater purpose than their own self of gratification. Their mission is usually simple and humble because they are sent on the mission. And the outstanding clarity and sense of mission was the result and the relationship between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You know the John's Gospel, sixth chapter? I'm one with the Father. And the Father is one with me. Just beautiful, simple statement of unity and clarity among the relationship of the, of, of the Holy Trinity. So we all long to what makes sense in life. To pursue our purpose, to become the best version of ourselves, and to find mission in life that ought to always focus and benefit others. Matthew 20, chapter, the Son of God came not to be served, but to serve. So, our mission is driven by need. The needs of others and our need to serve. It is the place where your deep gladness meets the world's deep need. Frederick Bushner. The mission is not even about us, but becomes the source of our greatest happiness. Isn't that amazing? First, do what is necessary. Then, do what is possible. And before long, you will find yourself doing the impossible. That's St. Francis. That's St. Francis. First do what is necessary. Then do what is possible. And before you know it, you can do the impossible. Mission involves exercise of our talents, and abilities to use them in the place and time that, that most need you. It is guided by the power of the Holy Spirit who speaks the message of God in our lives. How can I serve versus what is there for me? That requires humility as the most beautiful expression of relationship with yourself and provides the most direct route to establish a clear sense of whom you are and what you are here for. It allows seeing and knowing God because they do not turn to themselves but recognizing that God is everything and without him, there is simply nothing. 
simplicity. Do not get caught up in the complications of life, but rather they cut through the countless distractions and to invite us to live childlike life with total trust on God. Humility of God is the divine style, never the spectacle. From Moses to David to the baby Jesus in the manger, the Bible teaches us that God's divine way is one of humility and simplicity. Just think about it. When God freed his people from slavery, he did it through the faith and confidence of a man named Moses. Who was Moses? Had mess. <laughs> Problem child. Simple man with humble heart with total desire and trust to listen and to be what? To be obedient to the word of God, to be a conduit of God's grace to the chosen people of Israel. Moses out of all people. When, when he desired, that is God, to cause the fall of the powerful city of Jericho, you know whom he used? A prostitute. And for the conversion of the Samaritans, remember the woman at the well? The woman who had one too many husbands. <laughs> when the Gabriel announced God's plan of salvation, he did so in the, to the simple girl in Nazareth. As for the Magi, when they were told that a great king has been born, they went to Bethlehem. And what did they find? A little child in a manger. The simple things, the humility of God, this is his divine style. So, friends, humility and simplicity lead to honesty of life with intentions and desires that are to be pure in our hearts. The purity is an expression of unity with a relationship with ourselves that always focuses to serve the others. So then, Paul tells us uh, in the words to the community in, in Galatia. So then while we have the opportunity, let us do good. Do good to all, but especially to those who belong to the family of the faith. Service is the surest way to build a healthy sense of self. Because we turn our focus toward others and ask ourselves, how can I help this person become his or he or her best version of themselves? My friends, it is my invitation and my prayer that we will start to do so tonight. So, just a few moments. If you can just think about this. Clutter and congestion. Where do you live? Simplicity versus uncontrollable life. What complicates your life? Purpose and goal. What is your dream and mission in life? The clutter is the way to go and to get rid of and the sacrament of reconciliation. Right? Just think about when we commit sin. 
we feel kind of awful about it, right? I guess, I mean, I do, you know. And the funny thing is that then next day you forget about it, kind of. And a week later, like nothing happened. And a month later, who would even think about it? But the power of sin affects our lives. It's clattering all and within and affects our lives. So the idea of clattering is not just that we committed sin today and we feel very you know, emotional about it and we're going to go to confession, we're going to go, you know, we're going to go to hell, whatever. Well, that's nice. But again, this kind of tangible way of being aware that the power of sin is not just the moment that we have committed, but leads and master and influence our thoughts and our actions through the way how we work. I mean, when we sin and we're in, in, in that dysfunctional relationship with God, what happens? We feed our ego. We believe in our false self. We do all kinds of crazy stuff because the truth is painful, right? You don't want to look at the truth in the face. So we, we engage in all kinds of stuff to deny, to, 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 to move away, to kind of uh, just not to pay attention. And the clattering just gathers all over. And we cannot even go through. It's like, I cannot make it through life. The stuff is all over. Well, true. I mean, the Lord is smart. I mean, the Lord is smart. He created everything to help us to discover the beauty of whom we are in our relationship with ourselves. And he gave us sacraments. He said, don't, those, those, don't sweat the small stuff. I mean, I, I'm here for you. I died for you. I, I want to keep you clean and, and cleanse you and make you whole again and, and make you beautiful because I know who you are. There's no need to lie to yourself like in front of God, like God doesn't know who you are. You know what I'm saying? So the point of idea of the clattering is precisely the gift that we have given in the church, that we don't have to struggle with that and be affected by in such, a, I mean, in incredible ways, really not, but in, not in the positive way, but to bring him, bring to, back to him to make whole again. And I think this is the essence of what I'm trying to capture in, this, in the sense of the Advent, uh, in the Advent uh, search, uh, search for Advent hope. What does that hope look like in our relationship with ourselves? Let us appreciate ourselves being grateful for the gift that we are.